Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch and today we've got the greatest fusion since Goku and Vegeta back in the day. Yes, we are going to bring two game edges together. Two game edges probably have as little to do with each other as possible. The first one we've got is Unreal Engine. An engine for creating AAA games with a like 35 to 100 gigabyte install footprint. And in the other corner we have Raylib. Raylib is a wonderful framework for learning to learn C, C++, but it's got language bindings for just about everything. And Raylib is more on the lines of a framework like SFML, SDL, that kind of thing. And I've long been a proponent of Raylib. Well, what we've got today is an unholy hybrid of the two. So yes, if you want to turn Raylib into a 30 gig install, you now can. The question might be, why would you want to do this? Well, it gives you the ability to actually work with blueprints, but in a very easy manner. Also, a good answer is, why not? Because you can. And this guy, Darkness Effects, has made it possible. He has this open source project called Raylib UI. If you like what this mad lad is doing, by the way, drop him a star. This project just came out. I've been working with him a little bit on getting it up and running. There are going to be a few warts and bumps you're going to run into on the way. So it's probably not really beginner friendly yet, but it is going to get there. So we're going to go ahead and show you how you can use Raylib inside of Unreal Engine. So first thing you're going to want to do is get this repository. So Raylib UI, come on in here and clone the repository. So grab the URL for that one, go here, command, and then we're gonna just go, of course, we're gonna go to the, the temp folder. Uh, let me just zoom this in so you can actually see what I'm doing here. And then we'll just do git clone and then our repository. It's pretty small. It's gonna bring down everything you need right there. So now the next thing we need to do is create a project. Now this one, uh, it takes a little bit more than normal just because we need to make sure that it is a C++ project. By the way, you can turn any blueprint project into a C++ project later on by just adding a class to it. But um, what we're gonna do now, uh, we're gonna fire this up. So here, create a new project, call this uh, Ray uh, UE demo. All right, there we go. So make sure that it is a C++ project right there. And otherwise you go ahead and create it. Now this is gonna take a little bit of time because it is a C++ project. So we're gonna fire up Visual Studio, do an initial compile and all of that stuff. So we're just gonna let this run. I will be back as soon as it is done. Okay, so once our project has loaded, Visual Studio is going to do its thing. You can shut down Visual Studio. You are all done there. You can shut down your project because we have one more step. So what we got to do is open up into the directory where we created everything. Now, conveniently enough, I did everything in temp. So what we're going to do is take this Raylib UE, that's the Git repository we cloned earlier on, and we're going to do a copy of it. Control C, and then I'm going to go into our newly created project, and I'm going to create a new folder like so, and I'm going to call this plugins and then paste our project in like that. Then what we just do is go back and we launch our project and it's gonna say, oh, something needs to be built. Would you like to do so? And then you say yes, and it will now compile your new plugin to work with your project. I'll let um, Unreal Engine load up and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so our project is loaded here. You can see we've got new plugins available. If you go here, edit plugins, you should now be able to find Ray Raylib UE is now available. So how is this implemented? Well, it's implemented as a series of blueprint extensions. I also think you can still use C++, by the way, which is quite cool. So come in here now. I could come here. I'm going to go open and edit my level blueprint. So what we've got here, this is your default uh, level blueprint thing here. We have the node that is being called. Uh, so this is at the very beginning. We'll fire this one off and we'll do the simplest demo I can possibly do. And what we're going to do is say draw text. Now we're going to notice here is this is a Raylib. So you hear Raylib, you've got all these, you've got draw, you've got texture, uh, you've got various different utilities from Raylib that are all available. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll do a draw text node like so, and then we'll make sure there, the Raylib one. All right, there we go. So we're calling our Raylib function like so, and then what I'm going to do is put my text in here. So hello, oh, actually I don't need quotes. Hello world, like so, and we got to give it a size. So we'll start that off as 64 point font, and we can pick a color for it. So let's make that hot pink. All right, there we go. So there is our text being drawn. So when the, our game first launches, it will draw the text up on screen. So let's go ahead and run that. And you will see, oops, uh, I'll get out of there. I'm going to run it a different way. Let's minimize this down. So what you need to do is come in here and run it here. Uh, new uh, editor window PIE. And there you see, boom, hello world. That's it. That's all it takes to run and integrate Raylib draw functions from inside of Unreal Engine. So if you want a simplified drawing API, that is ultimately what this prov um, provides. But also, if you want to just play around with Raylib, but you want to use the Blueprints interface, well, you can do that now. So that is how you go ahead and run it. Uh, this is a more complex example uh, from his website. We'll, we'll implement the whole thing. So let's say here, let's add a new variable in. We'll call that font size, and it is of type integer. 
like so. Uh, so we will drop font size into our screen. We will get the font size and we will connect that into there. So font size, uh, we'll default that out to, uh, so I don't use blueprints all that often. I've got to compile it before I can set a default value, which is weird, but okay. So we'll come here and we'll start this one off at 32. So here we go, boom, we're gonna draw our text. Uh, and then when that's done, we're gonna set a value. So we're gonna get this text out shape. We're gonna drop that and we'll create promote as variable. And then we'll call this uh, RI text, like so. And I think that's all we need to do. Again, we compile it. And there's the values available for it over there. And we're going to use that in just a second. So on the event tick. So this is going to do the exact same thing. All this is, it's the same code we had before. So if I go ahead and run that, you're going to see, hello world. It's a little bit smaller now because we're using a smaller font, font point to start. So we're going to put something in the event tick. Now this is called every frame or every update. Uh, and then what we're going to do is set the font size. Oh, so here, let's go ahead. Oops, variable here and drop here. Ugh. Font size, drop that in. We'll do a set on that one. We'll drop this one in here. Now we're going to get the initial value of our font size over here. And then we're going to do an add to that. And we're just going to add one to it. So add one to our font size. And you get where this is going. So basically, now we'll drop that pin into there. So now every tick, we're going to create. So we're going to go 32, 33, 34, 35, et cetera, on the font. So now we're going to get our variable that we created earlier on, drop that guy into the world. So we're going to get it. We'll drag that pin out and we're going to set a value on it. So set members in that. Uh, we drag our fellow in over here. This one goes in over there. I click on this one. I should be able to see the values that are available. Yes, I can. So what I'm going to do is expose font size. So the font size value is available right there. So now what I'm going to do is take this value, drop that into my font size. Yes, uh, it's a little overwhelming at first when you're dealing with blueprints. And then we're going to pin this one out and we're going to call a draw text and then update version. So this is basically called every frame for updating the text that we drew earlier on. Oops, let's go ahead and put this pin in there so it knows which text to actually drop. And now we'll go ahead and run that. And there you see every frame, we are updating our hello world. So in a nutshell, that's it. There's all, again, all of Raylib's drawing functionality has been implemented. It's still very much a work in progress, but if you come on down here, you will notice there is a Raylib category and in it, you have 3D drawing calls, you have normal drawing calls right there. So 3D stuff. It's all been exposed. Draw is here as well. And then we go down a little bit more. We've also got rendering and texturing here as well. So if you wanted to do something so simple as like draw a circle on the screen, literally just call draw circle like that. And then pick how big you want your circle to be. I did not mean to double click it. I pick how big you want it to be, what color you want it to be, where you want it to be positioned and boom, you've got drawn. So you can use this as a super simple drawing or rendering layer inside of Unreal Engine if you want. Now, I do have to remind you once again, this is early on. So he literally just published this a couple of days ago and it's something he kind of did, uh, I think kind of as a whim and then people caught attention of it and thought it was really cool. And then I saw it and I thought it was really cool. And I shared it with you guys because I, hopefully you guys find this kind of cool. If you do find it kind of cool, do again, make sure to give him a start. Even if you're never going to use this, you have to admire the people that build something because they can. And that might be the only reason why you'd want to use this. Why would you want to use this? because you can. At the same time, it's also, again, once it's uh, a little polished and easier to work with, this is, you know, it looks convoluted if you're used to coding, but this is a nice introduction to visual programming. So you do have that aspect there. It is giving you a way of learning Raylib in a different manner. The only downside is you have an additional 33 gigabytes of install to get this up and running. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, that is it. If you want to go ahead and check that one out, it is available over here. Uh, at Raylib UE. I will, of course, have links in the linked article down below to check this one out. Let me know what you think. Personally, I think this kind of stuff is really cool. Even if I have no immediate or ever use for it, I still admire it for existing. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.